I'm gonna have to do this whole video with the really pissed off Robin. Yeah, he made a nest. There's little Robin eggs. Right next to my garden where I'm uh, gonna do this video. It's May 2nd here in South Dakota, and I noticed a few days ago that the dandelions are already popping up. Temperatures have been around 40, 50 degrees, and very rainy. Been going around, plucking some of the smaller ones. These ones I, I rinsed off in the sink. And uh, dandelions, oh man. What do we got here? You wanna be in the video, bro? Yeah. Dandelions are one of the easiest things to forage because they literally grow everywhere. Uh, they like the cold even weather. The yes, even in the forest, but especially in the backyard. If you're too lazy to go out in the forest and start looking uh, for food, oh, you gonna you gonna get a shot? Oh, there it is. Oh yeah, it's the best. Tell them how delicious it is. Yum yum. <laughs> <laughs> He's a good actor. Uh, usually they're incredibly bitter. So in the past, whenever I'd bring up wild foraging with friends or family, I would always get the question, did you know that dandelions are edible? And my response is usually yes, but have you ever tried it? Up until this season, I had thought dandelions were one of the worst edible plants that existed. They are incredibly bitter if you get them at pretty much any time during the summer in full sun. And then I read John Callis's book and he talked about the importance of finding young and tender leaves. So for example, let's take a peek at this one right here. Ah, ah. These leaves are absolutely delicious and not the least bit bitter. I actually enjoy the weird flavor. So I dug up two dandelions because I want to cook up uh, hearts for the first time today and I'm going to use the leaves for uh, my hummus sandwich. Dandelions are perennial so the smaller one I am almost 100% positive it uh, is a first year because I dug it up next to a tree that I planted at the end of the last summer but this fat one here I kind of broke off some of the root underground on accident. Uh, it's pretty big. I would guess it's at least on its uh, second year, um, but I'm gonna go inside and cook these up and see how yummy they are. So I cleaned up the root and heart. I just scratched the brown fibrous layer off and it seems a lot more tender underneath and I'm gonna fry it up. All right, first time trying a fried dandelion root. Here goes. Wow, that's actually unexpectedly awesome. I just put a little salt and pepper and no like seasoning or anything else. I wanted to fully experience it, be immersed in the experience and that was delicious, 100%. Up next, dandelion hummus sandwich. A little more skeptical about this one because you know, dandelion greens are so bitter, but here goes. Yeah, I'll be honest, with these young tender leaves, the hummus pretty much hides any of the bitterness and uh, just tasted like a regular old spinach sandwich, except this I didn't have to run to the market and buy. I could just go out in my backyard and uh, and get some leaves, so. And also spinach rots in like two days, so now I get fresh greens easily for my hummus sandwich. So you should absolutely get a good book on plant identification from an expert, but here's a couple of quick tips for identifying. Usually there is a red or like a dark purple almost um, streak down the center of the leaf towards the bottom and the, the leaves themselves, they have sharp teeth almost. And when I say sharp, I mean they look sharp. They're of course soft and uh, at the base where it connects to the root, it's white. Uh, you can get it mixed up pretty, pretty easily with shepherd's purse, but uh, that's also edible. Uh, otherwise, just wait till summer when the flowers are in full bloom and then it's pretty much impossible to misidentify. I might regret that. Just be careful with what you eat if you're finding out in the wild. <laughs> 